and into the jihadist network. Tell us where we are in understanding these groups and what it means for the future of French politics. Well, I think that this time it will affect very deeply uh, the politics. Uh, we had a warning for Charlie, but now it's, it's, uh, it's very much different. And um, uh, especially we are facing um, uh, terrorism here and election in some months, uh, some weeks even. And so it's the first time from I don't know when that we will have election under a state of emergency. And um, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid that it's a kind of white bread for National Front. White, white red for National Front. I think so. That, we, means, that means Marie Le Pen could profit, could benefit. Yeah, we have two options. How the uh, citizen uh, trust the government and one of us then say we, we have to trust a democratic party and we will vote for the democratic party whatever is Sarkozy or PS or whatever, a socialist party. Or um, the party who have been running our country for many, many years, forever, are not able to uh, maintain the security and we don't trust them and then they will vote for Marine Le Pen. What's the likelihood that you see? Break down those percentages for me. Is it 50-50 at this point or how do you see it happening? 50-50 like Joe Pecci? No, I'm not sure. I, I, don't, I really don't know. Uh, I think that what will happen in the next uh, few hours may be the speech of the president, but um, Regarding the feeling of the people on the stage, I mean, people from the countryside, uh, they don't trust the, the government, they don't trust uh, people anymore. Even they have no Muslim in their area, even the, there are no Muslim in their constituency, even they have no migrants, uh, they are afraid about that. You know, it's, uh, it's the f global feeling which is very bad. What do you see this, these attacks doing to the free movement of people and goods, the Schengen Agreement? Will it be suspended? Can it survive? Well, for the time being, it's a fact. I think we'll have on uh, 20 of November um, a meeting of the uh, Minister of Interior for all Europe to uh, in increase the level of uh, security. And uh, then we, um, because of the state of emergency, we brought back all um, the uh, ID check in the airport and uh, on the borders. But you know, for many, many years, we have been cutting the budget of army, defense, uh, interior minister, police. And so we cannot find the, the appropriate staff um, to fulfill this kind of obligation. We, we don't have people enough, so we have to hire people. Uh, or to recall maybe uh, young retired, maybe it will be an ID. But anyway, for young people who, who are now in the police, they need to be trained. So everything will take some time. From Charlie, uh, we spend more than one, uh, 900 million euro to restore uh, more staff and equipment. But it's also a very big issue. There's more needed than the 900 million euro. I think we need more. How much more? I don't think, but a lot more. A lot more to reorganize intelligence, cooperation, equipment, uh, staff. We need more, more, more. It, it appears that one of the five dead that the prosecutor's office has just released, is the, the name is um, Sami Amamur. He was under surveillance from 2012, but he slipped his surveillance. Is this a failing of the French state? Um, I will not speak about failure right now, it's not the right time, um, but what I can say is that um, because of our um, regulation, we are somehow a little bit weak uh, regarding the databases, because we have a committee in charge of uh, freedom um, for this kind of thing, and we are not allowed to cross uh, databases or to build a new databases without a lot of uh, cautions. So uh, we are asking for many, many months and maybe uh, two years uh, a special databases for the people who have link with terrorism, something which will be permanent. The problem of uh, the fish S, you know, the S uh, statement, is that it's just uh, um, uh, provisory. It's just uh, remain for one or two years. You cannot keep it forever. And we need these databases forever. Let me ask you in a slightly different way. Is it even possible to survey in France, in Paris, in Belgium, across Europe, but let's just talk about France, the number of suspected jihadists? No. Why not? 
because there is more than uh, 7,000 people uh, um, who has been uh, um, noticed as on the verge of radicalization and we cannot put a policeman behind everybody, it's just not possible. So what our intelligence is doing is trying to put priorities. And sometimes you have priorities on the Monday and they are not uh, on the priority of the verge of the things on, on the end of the week and because there is more priority coming. And so we give up with some people in favor of some other people and one of a sudden you have Kweshi, Koulibaly, Charlie and everything. To your knowledge, are any of the attackers Syrian nationals? And if that's confirmed, what will that do to the debate about migration that's roiling all of Europe? Well, um, uh, it seems like uh, the Syrian came through migrants' uh, um, connection. So uh, I was asking many times, and I'm not the only one, uh, how can we check the idea of the migrants? But at the same time, if you save people from the sea, you cannot expect that they get the idea on themselves. I mean, they, they don't carry the, the, they even don't carry anything. Uh, they, they even uh, um, are able to, to save their life. So we are not expecting from the children or the women or young men on those boats, on this situation, to have ID, but at the same time, uh, we have to let them go without ID. So we have this problem and it will be very pregnant the last um, months. I think that it will be a real issue uh, to let them enter into Europe, but at the same time, we cannot let them die. Well, it is a difficult and challenging issue. Senator, we thank you for your time.